Hey everyone. Shall we start? Connect the tongue to the palate. Inhale slowly, exhale slowly. Let us pray to the Supreme God, Divine Father, Divine Mother. We thank you for your priceless blessings, for divine light, divine love, divine guidance, divine love, mercy, inner healing, physical healing. Thank you for the inner strength to practice regularly. Thank you for your divine help and protection, for illumination, for abundance and prosperity. We thank you. Let's also do this whole affirmation by Master Chokhoksu. I am that I am. I am not the body. I am not the emotions. I am not the thought. I am not the mind. The mind is only a subtle instrument of the soul. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love and divine power. I am one with my higher soul. I am that I am. I am one with the divine spark within me. I am a child of God. I am connected with God. I am one with God and I am one with all. Okay, so this is a prayer that Master Chokok Sui had um, adapted from Alice Bailey's work who learned it from Holy Master DK. So hi, welcome. So today we are going to be talking about the, um, the second virtue given by Master Chokok Sui. This is again a continuation of our topics on yoga. So yoga is, well, there's Hatha Yoga, then there's union with one's soul, and then there's union with God. Now union with God is not something we're gonna talk about here because um, honestly, I don't think uh, we, we are there yet. But uh, you know, we, we will talk about union with the higher soul. And uh, the point of doing all this exercise is to help us understand how to get to uh, knowing our higher soul better. Okay, so plunging right in. So today's topic is uh, generosity. So we were talking about Yama Niyama. Now Yama Niyama are the first two steps of the eightfold path of yoga provided by Patanjali. Patanjali is considered to be the father of yoga. So uh, the eightfold path shown by him is um, has eight steps, which we talked about on Sunday. So those of us who haven't seen that, you can refer to the YouTube video. On it's called the Bhagavad Gita session number fifteen. It's on our channel, and um, for the rest of us, so we're going to move on to the second virtue, which is generosity and non-stealing. So again, you may be thinking like, okay, generosity. I'm a very generous person. You know, I give away all my old clothes, <laughs> and you know, I, I, I you know, I, I provide for my staff's children's education. So that's good. That's very, very, very good. Now, we are, what we are talking about, though, is generosity and non-stealing. So this is another level of generosity. So, um, you know, some of us might be thinking, but I don't steal. I mean, come on, you know, Sheetal, I mean, are you serious? Like, you really think I steal? No, I don't think you are aware. And uh, one of the things that we, um, you know, we sometimes do without thinking is like, you know, when we watch a video or we download a movie, which is pirated, that is a form of stealing. When we use software that is, um, you know, not an official licensed version, that is also a form of stealing. Why is it a form of stealing? It's a form of stealing because the person who invested, you know, time, effort, and money uh, to build that software is expecting a certain amount of revenue from it. And if we don't pay the appropriate price, then that person is obviously not getting that money. So it is in that sense a form of stealing. So, you know, pirated music, pirated software, you know, uh, some of us think it's okay, you know, in India, it's okay, blah, blah, blah. So just have a story for you. Um, so there's a school in Rajasthan, which, um, you know, they were running pirated software. And so when the, uh, when the owner said, okay, we're going to all get, you know, we're going to get 10 licenses of Microsoft Windows and we're going to get 10 licenses of Microsoft Office because that's what we had at that point. You know, that's what they had at that point. And so the people were like, madam has gone crazy. You know, this is available for free. Why does she want to pay for it? And then of course, you know, the, the management said, we're going to get official licenses of Tally. 
basically all the softwares are going to be because you know when they realized that this is happening and you know they they did the pranic healing courses they realized this because school was losing a lot of money so they just realized that there was a form of stealing out there and uh, it was subtle stealing because it's a charitable institution so it's not like anyone siphoning any money but you know there were all these subtle kind of uh, stealing going on and inadvertently of course so then when the software was purchased there was a lot of resistance from the team uh, on the on the ground to actually implement it because they were like, oh, this is just too much work. So that was one issue. And a uh, couple of other people who had, you know, pirated software in their office. So they would buy one license and then they would they would use it on a whole bunch of computers. This, of course, I'm talking about a long time ago. Now it's a much, much harder to get an unlicensed copy, although it's not impossible. But I don't recommend it because essentially it's a form of stealing. So big deal, you know, it's like some people say, I don't have the money. Well, if you don't have the money, then work towards it. You know, make yourself capable of buying it. Don't steal it. Why? Because you're stealing somebody from what is due to them. So you, you know, we need to observe that if it's happening that uh, people are not paying us for what is due to us, or we are not getting appreciation in the form of credit for the work that we do, either at home or in the office or otherwise. We just need to reflect, are we at some level stealing? Because you know the law of karma, according to a lot of spiritual schools and, and ours also, is pretty precise and pretty accurate. So if it's happening to us, then there's a problem somewhere. Okay. So, you know, there can be simple things. I'm just going to give you some subtle examples. For example, you know, you have a party at home and, you know, the guests have come and your staff has cooked the food or you call for the food from outside and everyone's like, you know, raving about the food. So instead of saying, oh, you know, I got the food from so-and-so caterer or, you know, my maid made the food. What do we say? We sometimes say, oh, thank you which is okay, but we don't give the credit to the person who actually made the food. So that is also a form of stealing. That's also a very subtle form of stealing. You may think that it's not stealing at all because after all, it's your staff and your guests. But again, you know, the reason I'm mentioning these things is because these are things that, you know, people who are probably on this forum would not think about. It's like, oh, that's a form of stealing. <laughs> so what have we covered? We've covered pirated software. We've covered pirated music, pirated movies. Uh, we've covered, you know, taking credit for food that was cooked by a staff member. What about uh, branded shoes and clothes? And branded pens and branded bags. Um, you know, for some of us, we think, oh, you know, it's like it's cost the company like a fraction to make it. Why did they charge us so much money? Well, because they've invested in the design. If you ever used a, a high quality bag from a, from a designer, you will know that it can carry a lot of weight. You will know that it can fit a lot more things and you can find those things much, much easier than you can in a similar bag of a different size or a different company. So they have invested in that research. That is why, you know, the bag or the, or the garment or the football or the shoe or whatever it is, it is of a certain quality and that's why they're charging you a certain price. If it's too high for you, it's okay. Just, just don't get it, you know, just, just don't bother getting it, but don't get into saying that, um, you know, it's, it's good. It's, it costs them 10 bucks. So I'm going to pay 10 bucks for it. Uh, it doesn't work like that. So that's also a form of stealing. So why are we talking about this? Yama niyama, the golden rule. So as we talked about yesterday, the golden rule is a way, it is a rule to make ourselves golden. Okay, so now you may be saying like yesterday I focused on the word gold. Today I'm going to focus on the word rule. So if anybody's seen a ruler, unfortunately I don't have one here, but suppose, you know, this was a ruler. It is actually the sole affirmation, but anyway. So suppose this was a ruler. So if I want to go from point A to point B, what is the fastest way to get there? Is to draw a straight line, right? What do we use to draw a straight line? A ruler. Does that mean you can't draw a, a line with a pencil? You can, you can, you definitely can, but the chances are, you know, it won't be a very straight line. There may be some deviations or, you know, we may draw like this and then we may go like that, which is all fine. Okay. The reason what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that the ruler or the rule helps us to get from point A to point B in the fastest, shortest, most efficient way. That is why it is called a rule or a ruler. Okay. So what are we talking about again? Yama niyama, which is do's and don'ts which is also covered as a topic called the golden rule in the pranic healing system, um, which leads us to the next topic, which is character building, which is what we've been talking about. So there are five virtues in character building. There's loving kindness and non-injury that we covered yesterday. Again, those videos are available on YouTube if you missed it. And today's virtue is generosity and non-stealing. So um, 
So generosity also involves the law of karma, obviously, like everything else does. And uh, like we've been also been talking that the law of forgiveness supersedes the law of karma. So what does that mean? So if somebody has stolen from us and is not returning our money, the law of karma says that they will have to somehow give that money back to you if that money was yours, right? Now, what if in a previous lifetime you had taken that money from them and this time they're just taking it back? That's one thought, right? So if they're just taking it back, then guess what? If you try and get it back from them again, that starts that ping pong ball, right? You take, I take, you take, I take. So instead, if we use the law of forgiveness and we forgive this person for taking our money and not giving it back to us, what have we done? We have cut the link. Now you may say, I can't just give away all my money like this. Yeah, you can't. I agree. Um, you know, but there's also something called, uh, as we talked about earlier, something called tithing and something called donation. So there are ways in our workshops called Kriya Shakti to basically convert this kind of what we call bad debt into a positive thing. But of course, before you convert it into a positive thing, you have to A, forgive, you know, you have to forgive the person. You have to be aware that you that you need to forgive the person. And of course, um, there's the, the angle of generosity. So why are we talking about this? You know, because again, the golden rule, the rule to make us golden, both in terms of our character as well as in terms of our finances. So the golden rule helps us to you know generate gold. Gold is um, a very precious metal, and um, you know when we become character full using these virtues, using these rules, that's when the gold begins to pour in. So I don't know if you've read like, you know, uh, common literature where a lot of people say, you know, money is the easiest thing to manifest. And some of us are sitting here going, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, tell me about that. Right. Uh, so basically, I guess the point I'm trying to get to is that perhaps money is the easiest thing to manifest because if you develop a golden body, if you develop a golden character, then the money will flow to you. Now, why will the money flow to you? So have you heard of the goddess Lakshmi? Yeah. So it is said that if you run after Lakshmi, she goes away from you. But wherever there is Vishnu, that is where Lakshmi is. Have you heard of that? If you haven't, you can ask your grandmom, she'll tell you about it. So the point is that if you run after Lakshmi, then she runs away, but she moves towards Vishnu. Now, who is Vishnu? So in the Pranic Healing School, we have a system, or it's called the three aspects of God. And again, this is universal to all religions. So it's not just anything, you know, it's not the, it's not the IPR of Pranic Healing in any way. So uh, basically, Vishnu is um, the love aspect of God, the preserver, the, uh, sorry, the preserver and the provider. So if you provide properly for everybody, then you have become a Vishnu. Once you become a Vishnu, or, you or you're practicing the Vishnu aspect of God, then guess what? Lakshmi is going to come to you, okay? So I'm going to stop here uh, with our topic for today, which was generosity and non-stealing in the context of Yama Niyama, in the context of the eight Yogangas of Patanjali. Okay. Let's remain aware of our heart, our crown, Let's raise our hands in blessing position. So we're going to bless our targets. So those of us who have them written, well and good. Otherwise, you can think of new ones right now. So let's bless our financial target. So in this context, since we are working on the soul and union with the soul, let's also bless the financial target that our higher soul may have selected for us. So one of the prayers that I normally do, if I'm not certain about what my uh, soul may have decided, I usually pray to my soul to lead me to the most prosperous path of my destiny. If you need clarification on free will and destiny, we have another YouTube video on that that you can watch on our channel. But for now, let's just focus on the financial goal that our higher soul has selected for us in this lifetime. Let's bless it. And then with the law of karma, let's also bless our own financial target. Make sure it's something that's realistic. It shouldn't be that your mind is saying, oh, let's get this. And the other side of your mind is saying, oh, it's not possible. So come up with something realistic, something that can happen in the next five days. Okay. 
let's move on. Let's move on to the health target. So health is a way of working out karma also. So let again, let's bless the state of health that our higher soul has selected for us in this lifetime. Let us bless that plan. And then let's bless the plan that we have for our health. So in case we have certain circulatory issues um, related to the heart, some people have heart issues, some people have hypertension issues, varicose veins. These are all circulatory problems which are all related to the heart and the back heart. So since that is the focus um, of today, let's bless anyone else who has a heart or circulatory related ailment. Let's also bless the target that the higher soul has selected for us in terms of our heart and our circulatory system. Let us invoke that we are able to learn the lessons that this health issue is here to teach us. And then let's bless the health target that we want. So suppose we have any of those issues, let's just project some beautiful pink energy from our heart and some golden energy from our crown and let's send it to this particular part of our body that requires help. Feel the energy flowing, feel the peace, feel the love flowing from your own heart going towards your own body. Okay, moving on to the relationship goal. So again, this week we are working on union with ourselves, union with our soul. So let us now bless our, we're going to do forgiveness with ourselves. We are going to use the context of generosity and non-stealing, which is giving credit. Okay, so who are we giving credit to? Let us give credit to God. Now, in this case, I mean God with a small g, okay, which is the higher soul. Okay, God with a big G is the supreme God. If you think you can give credit to the supreme God for whatever you have done in this lifetime, that will be fabulous. Otherwise, let's at least give thanks and um, acknowledge the presence of our higher soul with a small g. Okay, so let's raise our hands in blessing position. Visualize yourself in front of you. Visualize yourself, project pink from your heart to yourself and to your higher soul, project golden from your crown to your higher soul. Let us say, I the soul, yes, I the soul, salute the divinity within you, which is myself. I the soul, respect you. So this is a way of respecting ourselves. We are acknowledging what we do well it's like a SWOT analysis in short. So let's acknowledge our strengths. I, the soul, salute the divinity within you. I, the soul, forgive you for, you know, all the credit that I haven't received. I, the soul, forgive you for choosing a destiny that prevents me from having credit from everything that I, for everything that I have done. I, the soul, Forgive myself. Once again, I, the soul, salute the divinity within my soul and myself. I, the soul, respect you. I, the soul, forgive you for all the lack of generosity, all the miserliness that you have imposed upon me. I forgive you. Once again, I, the soul, salute the divinity within you. I, the soul, respect you. I, the soul, forgive you for all the lack of credit that I am suffering from. I, the soul, forgive you for choosing this destiny for me. I forgive you. Now let's do the other side, which is I, the soul, salute the divinity within you. I, the soul, pray to myself for forgiveness for all the things that I haven't done right for all the lack of generosity, for all the times when I haven't praised myself when I could. Yes, to yourself. For all the times when I haven't acknowledged how wonderful I am, how powerful I am, all the good things that I do. I, the soul, forgive you for not appreciating all the good things that I do. I forgive you. I forgive you for the lack of credit, I forgive you for all the poverty consciousness that I am suffering right now. 
for any lack of consciousness, any lack of money that I am suffering right now, I forgive you. I, the soul, forgive you. Be aware of your heart opening up. Be aware of your back heart opening up. Generosity and loving kindness are all virtues related to the heart and the back heart. Okay, now let's bless our, bless our spiritual target. So the spiritual target is something that the soul has chosen for us or we have chosen for ourselves. Perhaps it's being more generous with our words. Perhaps it's being, um, you know, more generous with praise for people. In the form of non-stealing, maybe it's about being less critical towards the people around us. So that could be a spiritual target in the context of generosity and non-stealing, in the context of the golden rule, in the context of Yama Niyama, in the context of Patanjali's eight yogangas coming from the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. This is just our small attempt to put all of this together, to make sense of it, and to be able to practice it, to remember, to practice, and to master. Okay, once you're done, open your eyes. Thank you everyone for joining us.